What's good everyone, welcome back to the short form content series. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the Premiere Pro alternative to the method uh, I showed previously in After Effects. Uh, by the end of this video, you're gonna have a really awesome transition which you can apply to future projects. In my opinion, this is a much easier alternative, uh, saves a lot of time and you can still get a pretty satisfying result. Let's get into it. This is the audio we're gonna be working with today. First things first, as always, we need to mark out the beat. Uh, I use M on my keyboard for this. Nice, so right now we've got um, a few clips which I want to be including in the reel itself. Let's drag them here. The first clip of which being a drone video, which I've sped up to, I believe, 300%. Before we do anything, we want to make sure we match the clip uh, to the beat. Alright, so far I'm happy with that. Uh, I've just previewed that and that seems pretty in sync to me. Alright, next thing you guys want to make sure you have is the uh, Sapphire Transition and Effects Pack. Probably one of the most famous uh, plugins out there. I'm going to be leaving a link in the description. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, find the effect S underscore uh, blur directional uh, Before doing that though, we want to actually make sure we add an adjustment layer to uh, the uh, window So we're going to right click on our project panel. We're going to press uh, New item and find adjustment layer uh, before uh, this whole project actually uh, Was created I made sure my resolution was 1080 by 1920 at 30 FPS with square pixels I'm going to drag this uh, into the timeline and the key thing here guys is you're going to want to make sure uh, you mark out three frames before uh, the changing clip and three frames after the changing clip. So that's one, two, three. We're going to cut this adjustment layer here and one, two, three. We're going to adjust, uh, we're going to clip, clip the adjustment layer there as well. Right, after doing this, you're going to want to cut this adjustment layer in half. You're going to apply S underscore blur directional to the first adjustment layer and to the second adjustment layer. And you're going to want to copy these settings. Uh, I've been experimenting and these are probably the most satisfying settings you can work with. As you can see, it's applying, it's trying to emulate this sort of motion, which is really cool as a transition. Here are the settings which you're going to want to keyframe. Alright guys, after applying S underscore blur directional to the adjustment layer, here are the settings you're going to want to copy. We're going to want to first and foremost make sure we keyframe blur amount, angle and shift by pressing the little stopwatch. We're going to change blur amount to 5, we're going to change angle to 180 and we're going to keep shift at 0. After this, we're going to go one keyframe forward by pressing the right arrow key on our keyboard. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the blur amount to 25, we're going to change the angle to 90 and we're going to change shift to minus 2. Once again we're going to go one keyframe forward by pressing the right arrow key, we're going to change the blur amount to 100, the angle to 135 and the shift to 1. Right now we've got the uh, first half of our uh, transition. And what we're going to do is we're now going to adjust the effect settings for the second second adjustment layer. All right, guys, uh, we're going to do the same to the uh, second adjustment layer, except we're going to make a few modifications to the keyframes. Once again, we're going to press uh, the little stopwatch on blur amount, uh, angle and shift. We're going to set the blur amount for the first keyframe. We're going to set this to 100. We're going to set the angle to minus 45 and we're going to set the shift to minus 2. Right, after do doing this, we're going to press the right arrow key to go one keyframe forward. We're going to set the blur amount to 75. We're going to set the angle to minus 80. And we're going to set the shift to 1. We're going to press uh, the right arrow key to go forward. We're going to set the blur amount to 30. We're going to set the angle to 15. And we're going to set the shift to minus 1. After you've done this, you've now successfully got a, um, a transition which you can apply to the rest of the clips. This is how it looks. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to just press Control C. We're going to highlight both of the adjustment layers. We're going to press Control C and we're going to press Control V. Uh, we need to make sure this is actually above the video layer because an adjustment layer only works for videos underneath it. Then we're going to press, uh, we're going to hold down Alt 
on the adjustment, both of the adjustment layers selected, and we're going to drag. This is just going to duplicate that. After applying this transition to each of the clips, uh, we're going to want to uh, right click on the ending video. And what I usually do is I just right click on the end. Uh, it's like a little red uh, square and arrow comes up. You're going to want to press apply default transitions. Uh, I'm actually going to make this slightly short, uh, shorter though, just so it doesn't take away from the video itself. And then I'm going to do the same to the audio itself and I'm going to press apply default transitions. Hey, thank you for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys found some value in this uh, tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be aiming for weekly tutorials, whether, whether that be Premiere Pro, After Effects or CapCut. Let me know what you want me to cover next. Uh, but thank you so much for watching.